Hello everyone, thank you guys so much for just clicking on this video. In this video, I'll be just talking about my long-term usage of the Cineback for the FX3 and the FX30. So let's just start with the cons so that we can end with the positives of the Cineback. So the number one con of the Cineback is just the build overall. I mean, the idea of having a Cine style body for the FX3 and FX30 is just absolutely amazing. But one of the few quirks I found with the Cineback is this top plate right here. When you mount your camera to the bottom and the top plate, this gap between the camera and the ca and the, the gap between the vanity plates and the camera is very tight. So if you have fat fingers like me, you know, when you when you try to hit the mode button, you're oftentimes fighting the cine back and you're trying to really stick your fingers in there. And sometimes I, I found out that during during my shoots, it just kind of became super annoying. And the fix to this is pretty straightforward. If you if you take out the vanity plate, then that fixes the problem. However, the vanity plate is what keeps up cable management. So I don't recommend removing the vanity plate. But yes, that's just one of the cons I noticed with the Cineback is the buttons being kind of hard to hit. And then the second con is that it's basically a glorified D-tap splitter. It's basically a V-mount plate that splits into four D-taps. Four so pretty much if you need this type of stuff, if you need the style of rigging, then the Cineback is perfect for you. However, for 90% of the shootings and the type of shoots that I do where it's run and gun, using a Sydney back like this becomes very heavy quickly. And for someone who doesn't use easy rigs, because I, I feel like easy rigs are also a very specific niche, I find that the Sydney back is too heavy for what it is. It's pretty much a four, four D-tap splitter and a V-mount plate, which you can easily replace by using rails. And talking about rails, the third con is this doesn't come with any rod system. So when you so when you use a rod plate, you're essentially just adding another 15 mil rod system that you can just use a separate V-mount plate for. So meaning you can just grab the small rigs V-mount plates or any 15 millimeter rod V-mount plates, and you can minimize this whole setup. Basically, when you have the cine back and you're attaching a rod system to add photo focus or map boxes or lens mount support, whatever 15 mil rod you're using, you're basically adding another plate on top of a plate. So at that point, it's just better to use a V mount plate with 15 mil rods so that you can minimize the setup. And if, and, and like the FX3 and the FX30, because it has Swiss, you can just attach your Arca Swiss plate on it and you have a quick super fast setup compared to a Cineback. But yeah, I think those are the cons that I found with the Cineback. Let's talk about the positives. The positives is that I definitely got looks with this setup. So with my FX3, which I'm filming on right now with this Cineback setup, you can definitely get higher paying clients and clients will take you more seriously. Of course, that's kind of ironic. It's not really something that you should be building your resume about. However, if you need a rig that is heavy, that is super stable for handheld footage, the Cineback is definitely the way to go. The only problem, again, I mentioned earlier is that there's not a whole lot of space. There's, like the whole 3D print here is pretty much for the vanity plate and for the DTAP splitter. So you're not really taking advantage of the whole space. But anyways, you know, if you need, if you, if you have a FX3 or a FX30, or Lumix S5, S52X, Sony 7.3, ZVE1, Sony 7.4, whatever camera that you have, Widget Pro and Kilo Pike, they have all kinds of models for your camera. And if you need a camera like the FX6, but you want to be, but if you want to have the ability to break it down into a gimbal setup, then yeah, the Cine back makes sense. So that's that's the difference between an FX6 and a Cine back is that a FX6 is an FX6. You use the FX6 as an FX6. However, with a Cineback, if you want to break down your Lumix S5 or your FX3 or FX30 into a gimbal setup, you can. 
but at the same time, if you want to use it like a cinema setup, then you can as well. So that's the positives of Cinebag. And another pros pro about the Cinebag is there's tons of mounting points. As you can see, there's tons of quarter inch threads. There's also a bunch of quarter inch threads on the top, the sides. You, of course you of course you have the tap splitter as well. So when it comes to mounting and power options, the Cineback has it all like a traditional cinema camera. So if you want to power it and you want to rig it out like a cinema camera, the Cineback is so good for it. So with all that being said, who is the Cineback for? To really answer that question, you need to really look at the type of filming and the workflow that you do. If you're, if you're someone like me who does run and gun shooting where the schedule can be early in the morning till night and you're carrying your camera every day, then the Cineback doesn't really make sense because yes, the, the extra weight and the possibilities of rigging, it does allow you to, it does allow you to capture a smoother handheld footage. However, the Cineback is extremely heavy and without a easy rig, you're really looking at injuring your back in the long term. So if you do a lot of run and gun, then just grab a top handle and grab a gimbal and you'll be fine. However, if you're in a studio environment, you're, you, you run a production company where you constantly use Sony FX6s and FX3s and FX30s or Lumix S5s and you want to have a studio setup, then the Cineback absolutely makes sense simply because you can lock this off on a tripod and you can have all the attachments like a monitor, a microphone, focus motor, you can have all of that stuff with the Cineback and you can pretty much turn your mirrorless camera into cinema camera. Hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully this video was uh, bias free. Hopefully I gave you guys a honest insight on the Cineback and yeah, if this video was helpful, please leave a like, share, subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.